TikTok, Instagram Reels, and YouTube Shorts each play videos continuously. This allows you to loop a video without it appearing to stop or start over. If you end your video at just the right location, with a little bit of editing magic, you can create a seamless loop. This might seem complicated at first, but filming a seamlessly looped video can actually be really simple. All it requires is a bit of planning. I'm going to break down one of my YouTube shorts that I published recently that uses this exact same strategy to keep people watching. And I'll add a few final pointers at the end of this video as well. Let's get started. See, when you record a video, there's usually a typical formula that you follow, and that's recording everything chronologically. You record the beginning, then the middle, then the end. But when you're trying to record a seamless loop, you gotta switch things up a little bit. You have to take the beginning and move it to the end, or you have to take the end and move it to the beginning. And then you hide the fact that it's out of order when you're editing, which we'll also get to later in this video. So what I need to do is find a way to turn this opening statement or hook and have it be the end of another sentence with a joining statement to connect the two. And here's what I came up with so you can see it in action. First, here's the hook. This video is a seamless loop. And here's the ending. Instead, I currently use songs from Storyblocks with no vocals, which makes it easier to hide the fact that... Now I'll show you how I recorded it out of order on purpose. Listen to this individual clip. Instead, I currently use songs from Storyblocks with no vocals, which makes it easier to hide the fact that... This video is a seamless loop. Now in Premiere Pro, in order to make this loop appear seamless, I actually need to cut the clip right after I say, easier to hide the fact that, so I'm going to hit Command plus K on my keyboard to cut the clip. Then I'll drag everything to the right to make space for the rest of the video. After that, I'll grab the new hook that we just cut from the ending and move it to the beginning of the timeline. Then you can fill out the in-between portion, which would be the rest of the video that I actually already have set up in another sequence. But this sequence doesn't have any music, which is a perfect segue to what I've already foreshadowed too. We'll need to add music to really add that extra punch to the loop, but we can't just add any music. Like if we were to go into Instagram Reels or TikTok and just grab any trending audio and drop it onto the video, the problem is that when our short form vertical content ends, the audio isn't going to loop. It's just going to be a hard cut and it's going to be pretty obvious that we faked the loop. So just like I said in the example YouTube short, as of right now, I get all of my music from Storyblocks and that gives me a few advantages. The first being that I can get music that is just instrumental, meaning there are no vocals and I can loop it a lot easier. I can also control control the volume inside of Premiere Pro so that it's not too loud or not too quiet. So I can still have the music, but it's not overpowering my voice. And I'll talk more about this later in the video. Because we all know that audio is way more important than video. Like if you can't hear what the person's saying, and with that said, for all of my YouTube shorts on my channel right now, I have only used Storyblocks music. But also Storyblocks is just the first music licensing platform I discovered when I first was building out this channel. And there are other platforms out there that you can use like Artlist and Epidemic Sound, for example. Also, don't get me wrong, using trending audio is cool. It can definitely help you grow on whatever platform you're posting on. But if you're trying to cross post on multiple platforms with a seamless loop and don't want to worry about copyright strikes so you can potentially get monetized, then you Using royalty-free music is the way to go. Now jumping back into Premiere Pro, once you have your music selected, I'll usually try and find a moment where there's a rise and then a beat kicking in. So in the same YouTube short example, here's what I mean. That rise that happens at the beginning of the song is perfect for the ending, with the beat kicking in right at the beginning of the video. So what I'll do is drag it over so that the rise aligns with the ending of the video. Then once I know exactly where to cut the music, click Command plus K or Control plus K on PC. Now drag the remaining music back to the starting point and extend it to the point that works best for your video. In my case, I usually end it directly before the video is about to restart. Now to adjust the volume of the music so that it's not overpowering my voice, I'll highlight all of the music and then click the G key which brings up the audio gain menu. Depending on the song, I usually bounce between negative 25 to negative 45 decibels. Test out different volumes and see what sounds best for you, as long as the music isn't overpowering your voice. Now I'm about to play the completed video with all of the additional graphics, sound effects, and captions so you can see how it all works together. But you'll notice something that happens during the loop section of the video. Give it a watch. This video is a seamless loop. Instead of recording everything in order, I recorded the ending of the video before I recorded the beginning. Then you just cut and reorder the footage and music inside your editing software. Pro tip, don't use trending sounds inside your social media apps because that music won't loop. Instead, I currently use songs from Storyblocks with no vocals, which makes it easier to hide the fact that 
this video is a seamless loop. You may have noticed this buffer that occurs when the loop restarts. This is unavoidable, but can be mitigated by crossfading your audio. Here's exactly what I do. Go into your effects panel, audio transitions, crossfade, then start with the constant gain effect. You're going to drag this effect to each audio clip at the start of the timeline. So your voice, music, any sound effects you might have, all of it. You can also shorten or extend the length of the constant gain effect if you'd like for the volume to ease in for shorter or longer for any given audio clip. I usually go shorter for most of my crossfade effects. Next, we'll add the exponential fade effect to all the audio clips at the end of the video. I'll shorten the exponential fade as well, except for the longer music track. I want the song to fade out to make room for the loop to begin again. And again, crossfading the audio like this helps strengthen the loop effect by reducing the buffer noise that happens when the video restarts. Thank you for watching, liking, and subscribing, guys. To provide you with some inspiration when you're scripting your own short-form vertical videos, I've compiled a list of some of my favorite YouTube shorts where I use the seamless loop in the description below. Now that you have a fundamental understanding of how to create a seamless loop, you can now apply these skills to your repurposed content or sound bites. And if you're looking to learn how to repurpose your long-form horizontal content like this video into short-form form vertical content, then continue on to this video on the screen now. I'll see you there.